I only started watching New Girl a year ago, three years after the show had already ended its successful run on Fox. What convinced me to finally check it out were the random clips and highlights from the show that I would see pop up on my TikTok feed. And as funny as these clips are, even with zero context, they pointed to a larger issue with the show that I wouldn't discover until I started watching, but I'll get to that in a minute. After the success of writing No Strings Attached, Fox approached writer Elizabeth Merriweather for TV show ideas. Her initial concept was initially called Chicks and Dicks, and was loosely based on her own experience of bouncing from Craigslist sublet to Craigslist sublet for four years in Los Angeles in her 20s. Hey, are you gonna murder me because you're a stranger I met on the internet? Yes, I am. The slight spin on the familiar formula was to take a quirky female character that would normally be a side character and make them the lead. Though it was also important to not make her the classic mother of the group who would be ignored by the guys she was always having to keep out of trouble. She's going out to find a rebound. Who's that girl? It's just. Zoe Deschanel was cast as the main character, Jessica Day. Up until that point, Zoe was best known for her band, She and Him, and for playing the offbeat love interest in films like Elf and The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and then drifting more into manic pixie dream girl territory in later films like Yes Man and 500 Days of Summer. Her era was pointing up, and New Girl was this perfect opportunity for her to be the star for once. And with that, we come to one of the biggest issues with New Girl. Jessica Day is by far the worst character on the show. No, that's crazy. That ain't real. <laughs> that's dumb. That's straight dumb. You're dumb. Before I continue, I just want to say a quick word about the sponsor of this video. Established Titles is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners were referred to as lords and ladies. They allow people to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land in Eddleston, Scotland, so that they can call themselves a lord or lady. Each purchase comes with an official certificate with the exact location of your spot of land, so you can actually change your name to lord or lady on your credit cards or plane tickets. If you're tired of buying your friends and family the same boring gifts year after year, buy them something fun and silly that will make their birthday or the holiday season more special. Not only are you buying a unique gift, but you're also helping established titles raise funds to support global afforestation effort groups like One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future. Plus, established titles plants a tree for every order, so it's really a win-win. Right now, established titles is having an early Black Friday sale. If you use my unique code, Entertain the Elk, at checkout, you'll get an additional 10% off. And established titles told me that the first 200 people who use my link will be grouped together. So in a way, we can all build our little elk gang. I call it a gang because I just found out that apparently that's what a group of elk is called. Anyways, go to EstablishedTitles.com slash Entertain the Elk to get your gift right now, help the planet, and help my channel all at the same time. There are certainly qualities of Jess that are great. She's intelligent, kind, determined, passionate. But so many times throughout the run of the show, her strong-headed determination and passion leads to moments that make her so irritating, grating, insufferable, and just annoying as hell. Time and time again, she disrespects people's boundaries. She'll try and fix a bad situation, but just makes everything worse. And when she's called out by those around her, she wallows in pity until the people who should actually be upset are the ones left to apologize for no reason. That happens so many times throughout the show, and I'm sure it's meant to make her look like the adorkable friend who has good intentions that inevitably blow up and hilarity ensues. But her fierce determination usually just results in her trampling over everyone around her. It's really frustrating watching people who just can't get out of their own way. And it would be one thing if it was a character arc where she had to learn these things about herself in season one and grow and change to be more accepting, honing that determination to build up and encourage her friends as opposed to forcing them into her own opinion, right or wrong. But that never happens. All in all, she's kind of the same character at the beginning that she is at the end. Shut up, stupid. <laughs> You're a dummy. You're the... So... And I don't even, like, you're the, okay, oh, here we go. This goes back to the underlining issue I mentioned earlier. When people talk about their favorite scenes and moments from New Girl, they don't usually include or highlight Jessica Day. Stop being so mean to me or I swear to God I'm gonna fall in love with you. They often include the strong supporting cast, which is far and away the best part of New Girl. Nick, Schmidt, Winston, Cece, Coach. Everyone had great chemistry, which is rare in most shows. Different characters could pair up, and unique and interesting dynamics would arise. And even though the spot for the strongest relational chemistry is reserved for Nick and Schmidt, 
What do you mean? You process this however you need to process it. Followed in a close second by Winston and Ferguson, Jess and Nick did have strong chemistry too. That's not the first time someone's broken my feelings sick. So much so that apparently in the first few episodes, the producers and writers had to consciously keep Nick and Jess separated so as to not progress their romantic storyline too quickly. Is it true that there, um, there was so much chemistry between you and Jake in the beginning that you guys couldn't be in the same shot together because it was just bleeding? They, they, I remember them saying that, that they were like, listen... You guys have such good chemistry that like this is a series like we have to play this out over time and we don't want to put you guys in this in the same like storylines together because we're worried that people <laughs> are and I was like what are you wait, what isn't that like a good thing tracking their relationship in the early seasons was one of the most interesting storylines especially the moment when they finally kiss for the first time in the season two episode cooler but hanging so much of the series on a pivotal relationship made New Girl just another show stricken with moonlighting syndrome. For those unaware of the hit 1980s show starring Bruce Willis and Sybil Shepard, it's remembered as one of the first, or at least most popular examples of a television show with strong romantic tension between the two leads, with the will they won't they dynamic being the highlight. But once the leads finally got together, the show went downhill severely and was never the same. When the strongest element of the show is the romantic tension between two lead characters, there's no way to really sustain that. Either they get together and stay together like Moonlighting and The Office, or they get together, arbitrarily break up and spin their wheels just so they can get together again near the end, like Friends and How I Met Your Mother. It's really a lose-lose situation for television shows that want to sustain that creative excellence. That's a big reason for the mess that was season three. We obviously struggled last year. I think one of the show's strengths is that it's always been able to go to a million different places and do a million different things. But the problem with that is sometimes when we take a big swing and miss, you really feel the pain of that. Again, that big swing she's talking about is putting Nick and Jess together. They had no choice. Once the chemistry is there, it gets to the point where it's too palpable to ignore any longer. The cast and crew of New Girl knew it, and the audience sure knew it. So you can't keep delaying it, otherwise you risk frustrating your audience. But putting Jess and Nick together led to the show's eventual floundering. By moving into the Nick-Jess relationship, we changed the engine of the show to this relationship inside of the group. The trick with last year was you get these two likable, audience-favorite characters in a relationship, and to make it interesting, there has to be conflict. But what kind of conflict can you have without making one of the two parties look like a villain? You have to walk a careful line, but then that's not great for comedy. In season three, there was also a lot of creative swings and misses with Schmidt's character. There's the polarizing plot line where Schmidt dates two women at the same time. What, what was I supposed to what, do? you think you can have a bunch of wives? You got one wife! This is the way the world works! Why? I don't know. And later, Schmidt decides to move out of the loft, fracturing or at least altering the dynamic of the group. And then there was the reintroduction of Coach, which created several clunky episodes to readjust the group's dynamic with the new addition. At the end of last year, I was at a real low point. I directed the season three finale, which was the first time I've ever directed anything, and we threw out the script after the table read. And then we threw out another version of the script on Thursday, when we were supposed to start shooting on Monday. We threw it out because it was originally this episode where we were really dealing with the breakup. It was a bummer, and it was heavy, and it wasn't funny, and it was a culmination of the problem we've been having all year. Our hearts were in the right place, but it just wasn't funny. It was kind of like, ugh, how did we get here? In order to course correct the show in season four, the writers went back to the basics that worked for the first couple seasons. They simplified what had become convoluted character arcs and brought everyone back together as a cohesive team. We had to focus on Jess trying to find love. That's where the initial impetus for the show had been. This year, we started to tell stories where our characters were not in conflict with each other. They are stories of them all as friends, pushing back against the world. And the result was an excellent season full of memorable episodes like Background Check. When I was nine years old, I fed cereal flakes to a frog and it died. When I was 10, I once walked by my mother sleeping and I snuck in the room and I put a lemon in her mouth. Goldmine. You must be Nick. 
Well, friends call me Gay Nick. Thanksgiving 4, Spider Hunt, and Clean Break. And season 4 was probably the last of New Girl at its creative peak. And then later on February 9th, 2016, a few episodes into season 5, New Girl died with the episode Reagan. Get out! And I, you, you've crossed the line! Here's the line, and you've crossed over it! Now, the death of the show isn't entirely about the character Reagan, even though I'll get into the reasons why her character just didn't work, but her introduction signaled a larger problem for New Girl. As season 5 begins, Coach has left for New York, Schmidt and Cece are now engaged, and as Jess leaves for jury duty for several episodes, a plot line created so Zoe Deschanel could give birth and be with her family for an extended time, Reagan is added to the cast, and that character is just bad in so many ways. Her introduction felt forced, it was obvious that she was added simply to fill the gap of Jess's absence. Her character was quickly reduced to just a sex object, like in the episode The Decision, where Nick and Winston have to decide who will sleep with her. She didn't really have a memorable personality more than just being the hot girl. The relationship between Reagan and Nick felt contrived. The relationship didn't seem to bring out anything new in Nick that we hadn't already seen in his and Jess's relationship, like his commitment issues and bad communication. And for a comedy show, I can't think of a single scene or moment where Reagan was funny on her own, independent of the other characters. A character introduction like this often signals the death of a show. It communicates to the audience that the show is simply spinning its wheels, waiting for its inevitable conclusion. In this case, the introduction of Reagan, who was basically an anti-Jess character, was filler before Jess and Nick got back together. Another sign of near death is when characters get married. This is the same problem that Friends and How I Met Your Mother had. Characters get married, which kills romantic tension and drama that is so exciting to watch and follow. The characters move out of their current living situations, fracturing chemistry and dynamics that made the show work so well in the first place. And then the ultimate death nail, children. No! Well, what does security do about it? Nothing. Typical! Nothing destroys tension, drama, and chemistry more than annoying children. There were certainly excellent episodes after season four, but they were usually just the big romantic season finale episodes, like Schmidt and Cece's wedding in Landing Gear, when Nick and Jess get back together in Five Stars for Beezus, and the finale episode, Ingram Paterski, but those episodes became the exception and not the rule. New Girl was never the same after the episode Reagan, which is why that's the day New Girl died. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video about New Girl. If you did, please like it and share it with a friend, but also leave me a comment below. Tell me the day that you think New Girl died, or tell me if you think it was great all the way through. Just in some way, if you could please interact with this video, that way we can appease the algorithm gods and they can share this video with more and more people. Here's my quick reminder that if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe, but also click the bell below. That way you'll be notified and won't miss whenever a new Entertain the Elk video comes out. Thanks again everyone so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.